Boopity bippity pop. Hello, I'm Tom. In this video, I'll show you how I speed painted an entire Death Guard army in just under 48 hours. I painted this army in a grim dark style, a more realistic style, to match the Death Guard. I used contrast paints, some oil washes, and enamel paints. It's super easy and fun to do. Please subscribe, comment, and like the video if you enjoyed it, and also check out my other videos. I have many half painted armies and decided to challenge myself to paint an entire army to a good standard as quick as I could. This video might help you make your painting more efficient and maybe inspire or motivate you to try it too. My army is a mixture of new model kits, some conversions and eBay rescues, and some part painted test models. It works out to approximately 3,500 points of models. Where I had duplicate models, I kitbashed them with different heads and parts from the Age of Sigmar Putrid Blight Kings kit to make them differ slightly. I painted three Plague Burst Crawlers, three Bloat Drones, three Blight Haulers, three Demon Princes, two Plague Surgeons, a Lord of Contagion, Typhus, Noxious Blightbringer, Talaman, Putrefier, 13 Blight Lords, 20 Plague Marines, and two Death Rep. <sighs> Step one, priming. I prime black with an airbrush, but you can use a can of spray too. Make sure you wear a mask and have windows open, or do this outside. I don't have a garden, so I did this in my room with a large window open. So the next step was gray, a highlight from above and the sides. You want to leave black at the very bottom of the models. The worst thing about this project was that I sneezed in my mask when priming. Not cool. <coughs> then I sprayed white just from above. This is called a zenithal highlight, which means where the sun or light source would cast shadows on the model. A lot of time was put into priming, as I'm using the highlights from this as free shading on the models. The priming layer will be showing through at the end. This is especially good on the demon flesh. Priming all the models took me an hour. Step two, play bearer flesh contrast. All the capes, hoods, shoulder tassels, and some zombie heads were painted with this. It took 30 minutes and I did two coats. When you're batch painting or speed painting, match duplicate models together so you paint them in a row. This will increase efficiency and speed as you're painting the same model a few times over. Try to be neat as this increases the speed too. By the time you finish the last model, the first one is dry and ready for another coat. Step 3. Athematic Blue Contrast Paint 
I use this on some tentacles and pipes. Step 4, Felupus Pink. I use this on the demon flesh and tentacles. One cool thing about contrast paints is you can use them like watercolours. So in this clip here I'm using the uh, Volupus pink and then feathering the edges with water blend the edges from pink to uh, white makes this demon head look like it's part of the armor growing out of it For the flesh, I did a mix of 3 to 1 water to Volupus pink. After finishing this, I was four hours in. So here you'll see the colours are very bright, but after the enamel wash and oil paints at the end, it will darken down the colours, make them less vibrant. Make sure for similar models that you differ which parts you paint. Next step is Gullum and Flesh Contrast. I use this on the zombie heads and some of the pipes. I also made a washer of this, which is a mix of one to one water to flesh. I use this to paint all the skin. Again, make sure you wick up any pools of paint. I also use this to paint all the maggots. I was six hours into my speed paint. Next step, contrast skeleton hoard. Use this to paint all of the bone and horns on the models. Also used it to paint all the hives, any skulls and bone parts. Next step is Wraithbone. I use this to highlight any teeth that had been covered over with contrast. which I then used the skeleton hoard on. I also used the wraithbone to highlight any like warts or growths. Next step is earned in yellow contrast paint. 
after basing the warts and growths and pustules in Wraithbone, I went over these with the yellow. I also use the yellow to paint any sort of fat or exposed parts of flesh. Then I use contrast gore grunter fur to paint any wood parts. A lot of the axe handles and guns have wood parts on. Also used on any sort of wraps or cables. It's inevitable when you're painting this many models that you'll miss parts. So what I did is when I was painting a colour, if I noticed anything that I'd missed, I'd put the paint pot down and st stack the models that have missed those bits next to them. Then when I finished my current stage, I'd go back and touch them up. Giggity. Next step, Evil Sun Scarlet. This is a really bright red, which I used for the cabling on the models. After the red pipes, this is 12 hours into the speed paint. Next stage is painting all the metallic parts. This is one of the most challenging parts as it took six hours uh, just to do the silver parts on all the models. I'd suggest listening to music or an audiobook or something while you're doing this because it can get very boring but well worth the effort. Then you use Nihalak Oxide, which is just a blue on all of the smoke areas. And this is what it'll look like once it's been grimed up and oiled. Then the longest stage of the entire speed paint is painting all the gold trim. I used Gehenna's Gold, which I think is one of the worst gold paints I've ever used, and also why it took so long. But that took 12 hours just for the gold. Boopity, boppity, boop. I'm going to have to use some uh, magic here to speed up the paint because that gold took me 12 hours. Next stage, I varnished all the models. You don't have to do this, but it's, it was easier with the griming and oil steps. But I just, uh, they have a thin layer of varnish to protect the paint underneath. Then went on to Streaking grime. Beep, beep, beep. So next stage, I streaking grimed everything. So spray them all. Beep, beep, beep. Beep. So I airbrushed all this uh, on, but you can paint it on. I in fact did a test of just using a paintbrush. Um, it took longer obviously, but I'm going for speed here. Then we, what we do is use white spirit to remove the grime. Make sure you wear a mask again. All you do is dab on the spirits gently and it wicks away and eats at some of the grime and pulls it away. I'm not rubbing on hard here. <laughs> uh, dabbing gently at the model with the cotton bud. It leaves behind some dirt in all the cracks and gives it a grim look.
So you see here on the uh, front of the tank here, goes into all the crevices. Any flat bits of armour you want to have a uh, cleaner so that the grime goes into the sort of crevices and recesses. I also varied this between models. So on some vehicles I left more grime on and on others I took more off. Here on this Blight Lord you can see it leaves all the highlighted flesh behind, all the it does darken it down, which is what we're going for. Then we use wrist streaks from AK Interactive. So this stuff is an enamel paint, so you put it on where you want rust. It's really easy to use. So sort of do streaks with your brush if you want, or you can just dab it on. Just think where would rust collect, so where liquids or water have run down onto the model, where would the streams of rust or where would it corrode and build up and again try and alternate it where you you do this on each model so after you've covered it in rust streaks fill your brush up with white spirits and dab the edges and it blends it in And then you can pull the brush down and it streaks the enamel downwards and cleans away some of the excess. This is what you're wanting. Again, imagine where the uh, where gravity would take it in effect. So I've got too much hair on the top here, so I'll just use a bit of white spirit, rub it, and it fades away like magic. This is what it looked like when it's finished. And this is what it looks like when it's dry. It dries matte. So some areas go heavy with it, some lighter. Next stage, I use some oil paint. And make sure you've got the artist one. It's got like stronger pigments and is better for oil wash. And this is how easy it is to make an oil wash. Just a bit of oil and some white spirit. I put three syringe fulls in. And this is the consistency you're going for. So strong pigment, but it's quite runny still. And all you do, dab the oil into the crevices and cracks, and it runs into all the recesses. I then get white spirit and uh, sort of run over the panels that have been covered just to clean them up so that it's not completely black.
aptalon 502 copper oxide um, it's like a verdigris um, oil paint this is how I make the verdigris wash so again just oil paint and some white spirit and mix it up till it's quite runny about that consistency particularly aim for areas that have the gold on just imagine where would this run if it's been rained on and where would the fluid flow from it You can then use the oil paint straight from the tube. Just dab a little bit on where you want the blue to start. Wet your brush with white spirits and just streak it down like this. And again, if you've got too much, just wet your brush again and go back until it's removed as much as you like. Putting streaking grime on all the models took around an hour. Then removing the grime with spirits or a rag took around five hours. The rust wash, verdigris and black oil wash took around 10 hours, bringing me up to 46 hours into the speed paint. So I only had two hours left to finish them. So the final stage, I decided to do a purple pink plasma glow on all of the coils and eye lenses. So I used Jean Steeler Purple and Emperor's Children. Base the part you want to go in the purple. This is how I test accuracy with my airbrush, is I aim for freckles on my skin, make sure I get it right on the dot. So I, I, shot, I sprayed blue. I sprayed the purple around the coils with a bit of overspray, like on the model here, on the plasma here. It goes onto the armor. Then use the emperor's children to highlight the lenses right in the middle. I think this contrasts nicely with the grim look. Then with the pink you want to get a just a dot in the middle of the lens. Just in the middle of the coils. Leaving a lot of the purple behind. I purposely chose this purple because it looks like intestines. And get white and I highlighted the lenses with a dot in the top right of each one. And also white dot right in the middle of all the lenses. And in the middle of all the coils. Then I highlighted the coils with Carbo Crimson, just go around all the edges and give it a recess wash. And that's all the plasma glow done.
Also highlighted the edge of the lenses with the Karaberg as well. With that final stage of the plasma glow, that took me to just under 48 hours of speed painting. I didn't do it in two solid days, I'd spread it over the space of a week. And this is the finished army. Do you think this will motivate you to paint your own army? It's a good sense of achievement to have finally have a finished army. The next stage I need to do is base all the models. One thing I learned from the speed paint is how to be efficient. So as I said, painting similar models together really sp sped the, th the whole process up. If you come across anything you've missed, just carry on with the, the step you're on and move on to the uh, finished models after. Just pile all the ones together that you've missed and come back to them. Also stick to your plan. So halfway through this, I decided I would do a red plasma glow instead of pink. Um, and then had a bit of a panic when I couldn't decide what to do. So I, I stuck with my gut and I'm glad I did the pink plasma glow. It looks awesome. Here's my Demon Princes. This one, I think, is a Forge World model I got on eBay for cheap. Official Forge World model I got on eBay for cheap. I just put some Drakari parts on it. And this is uh, the original Nurgle Demon Prince, but I've given it a different face. said comment if you've got any suggestions on how you think you make it more efficient or if you've done anything like this yourself please leave a comment check out my other videos if you like this thanks for watching